lagi Cukula kalau dapat kateori Burung kaya kapak pundi dulu That's Robin Hood We're riding a horse <laughs> Robin, Hood, Robin, Hood, Robin Hood, Robin Hood, Robin Hood. Robin Hood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos, all commission free. While other brokerages charges up to ten dollars for every trade, Robin Hood doesn't charge any commission fees, so you can trade stocks and keep all your profits, guys. Ooh. Plus, there's no account minimum deposit needed to get started, so you can start investing at any level. The simple, intuitive design of Robin Robinhood makes investing easy for newcomers and experts alike. View easy to understand charts and market data and place a trade in just four taps on your smartphone. You can also stock collections, view stock collections such as 100 most popular. Finish it because I can't read Tell anymore. us about it, Gil. Guys, yeah. with Robinhood, <laughs> you can learn how to invest in the market as you build your portfolio. Discover new stocks, track your favorite companies, and get custom notifications for price movements so you never miss the right moment to invest. Kalila. Thank you. Robinhood is giving listeners to Tiger Belly a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help build your portfolio. Sign up at tiger.robinhood.com. Repeat it, Gil. It is. It is tiger. Robinhood. Com. Enjoy the rest of the show. If he cried, I don't want. I'm the queen. I'm oh. just saying. As a king, that's what I. Would. Daniel Cormier cries, and he's he's a god. <laughs> Well, let's start. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I don't even know what you're doing right now. Five. Four. Three, two, two one. one. Oh, my God. Sorry about my attitude, guys. Um, I had a nap. I want to have a nap, and I get grumpy, and I came in here, and I threw some fucking heat down. You know what it is that, you know, last week, welcome to Tiger Belly. I read on Twitter, <laughs> you know, about, you know, there was somebody, like, on Twitter said, this is the list, a list of the best podcasts or whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. And like, I guess Bill Burrs wasn't on the list. Some some guy commented, you know what I mean? Like, how the fuck is Bob, um, Bill Burr not on this list? And Bobby Lee's podcast is he's he goes he's um, he he does only Asian jokes, and then he also tries to be alpha male with all the people that work there. That's what he said. Well, right? that's, that's, he, it goes to show he absolutely does not listen to this podcast. No, he he. I guess no. What I know what he's saying. He's saying like I'm. You know. I, you know how I yell at people. Roast, roasting, yeah. roast, and he. Yeah, but that's like the most no, but, beta move ever. I understand that, but the guy. I wanted the guy. I, if the guy's listening right now, I want to tell him that I didn't make the list, and if there was a list. I wouldn't put my name above anyone's, and I don't give a shit. You're right. I yeah. I think that Bill Burr should be in every list. I think he should be in the number one list, right? But I just want to say this to the guy: is is that you know you could have say whatever you want to fucking say, but everyone on that list, everyone on that list, they're all my friends, and they think that I'm legit. You go to any of those guys, Tom Segura, Joe Rogan, or anything that. What do you think of Bobby Lee, right? And they were not going to go, oh, yeah, he shouldn't be on any lists, right? So it's like when I read that, it hurt my feelings for a second. Mm-hmm. But then I had to think it through and go fuck yourself, bro. Because yeah. that's ridiculous. Phoenix. All the way. Where were okay. we on the list? Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Where, what are you trying to do? I want to know where we uh, We made a list. I'm happy. No, it wasn't a list. It was just like he was just. He, it was somebody. a guy. Oh, was, okay. He said, these are my favorites. Yeah, these are my favorites. And okay. he's just like, and then they try to, and then there are guys that think that I'm not funny. It's fine. And they think I shouldn't be on the fucking list. That's fine. But then it's like, then they throw their little opinions in there. It's fine. It's America, right? But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you try to hurt me, bro? I didn't do, I don't did nothing to you. Right? And then all of a sudden, I have to just say something. Don't so, hurt my pappy. Yeah. I mean, that's like, you know, I just, you know. I'll get but, you. Um, I'll get him, babe. <laughs> it's been a really um, weird week, exciting week. You know, um, you know, there's some good. Uh, the Game of Thrones came out. That was we're not gonna get into it because there's you know, it's, there's spoilers it's too and soon, stuff. Too, it's too soon. soon. But um, we should talk about. But George's I, I do feelings. want to talk about um, what? We should talk about George's <laughs> feelings. About what your feelings about what? Because Jessica just got married. Oh. Yeah, I do want to get into that. I so, yeah, I do want to get into that. I, I, that's open there. Yeah, let's open there. <laughs> so, um, oh, that's what we're gonna open with. Yeah, I just I genuinely want to know. I know you guys are friends, mm-hmm. and I know she had um, thought about inviting Bryce. 
<laughs> oh, God damn it. Yeah. I didn't know that information. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I thought about well, it. Well, my feelings went from here to here now. That's, uh, <laughs> That's my job. Well, it gets worse than that. It's worse than that. So just basically, this is what happened. Jessica, Kalila's friend, he's, she's my friend too, I guess, had her wedding Should have stayed over weekend. there with the campers instead of yeah. jump on a mic. And, so um, you know, I was sitting there in the wedding and I turn around and I, I see Gilbert there, you know, he's on the, the white groom <laughs> side, which was fucking Yeah, weird. that was so weird. Why were you on the I groom side? I was running side? a little late and I realized when I sat down, I was like, I'm the only Asian person on this side. <laughs> yeah, but you know, that's when you stand up and you move to the but other they, side. But they were about to start walking. And I was like, oh, I but see. then I also saw you from the other side. But then I know that I noticed that there were empty seats, and then you were like telling people not to sit there, so I didn't want to go. Yeah, because there. um, that's a whole other issue, because you know I got yelled at because they thought I was going to be late to the wedding. Oh my god! And um, <laughs> here we go again. Oh, no, no, god, here just, we go again. Just, check out the open, pa- check out the Patreon. With, let me just open. <laughs> let me just open with my point of view, right? And I'm looking around, and some a couple goes, "Can we sit there?" And I go, "No, no, no." I'm saving this for Kalila and, um, you know, her sister. And Wait, then, you yeah. were there before them? Yeah. I'll tell you why in a bit. No, we don't have to get into it. <laughs> the, the Patreon. Wait, I don't want to get, I want to talk about Just li- li- listen to the Patreon. No, listen to the I'm Patreon. Gonna get, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a, okay. Patreon. Listen to the Patreon. Yeah, please <laughs> the Patreon. listen to the Patreon. <laughs> yeah, listen, yeah, buy the Patreon, listen to the Patreon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I was just sitting there, I'm like, where's my girl? Oh, well, why are you continuing then? <laughs> because I have to get into his. This, is, this, isn't, this isn't. We, you don't need to set George up with this information. He doesn't need to know this. Part. I need to tell a story from beginning to end. I'm sorry. That's not how I do it. Okay. okay? Well, the end. I, the I end ends with me. Okay. There is the no end. end. There is no end. So here's the thing. I'm turning around. I go. Wow. You know, the little girl comes and she's doing the little bubbles. Flowers. You know, flowers. Yeah. And the music is starting. And you know, you know, Jessica is getting married once in her life, right? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Once in her life, you know, you would think that her best friends would be there. That's all. So anyway, um, I turn around and I think to myself, well, my, it's good, Clyde, uh, and but no, she's not here, but where's George? And in my head, I'm like, George just has to be invited. And it turns out that he wasn't. So basically, this is what happened. George, a couple of years ago, <laughs> oh, no. had feelings for Jessica. Mm. Deep one. Deep, 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 deep feelings. Stove right? top feelings. <laughs> and he, he, he mulled it over in his head. He's like, I am going to take a risk and I'm going to be an, a male and I'm going to get this. Alpha move. I'm, I'm going to get this woman. And he lunges in for a kiss or whatever he does and she fucking just goes, in your face, nerd, and closes shop. <laughs> right in his fucking face and he, he got all hurt and shit he was like oh no you know and he was hurt for a very long time but then as all, all wounds heal through time mm-hmm. right and then the wedding happened and the wound was cut back open <laughs> We're cut back open like you're not even invited to the fucking wedding bitch mm. right you don't get my puss and you don't get to go to the wedding and then she opened it up and it's like fucking a thousand People shit in that wound. Jeez, wow. just took a dump right into that wound. You're septic. You're mm-hmm. septic now. Poor George. But I missed you, man. You yeah. deserve to go. And um, I, I might have been. And you could have gone. I might have been the seats one to put the brakes on. It. <laughs> there were seats available, so I'm like, you could have gone. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Bobby let me down. How did I let you down? And he was supposed to be my. Maybe we're not the doing wedding. that. We're not doing that anymore. Okay, all right. We I'm just saying, no, I have to say, look, Bobby let me down. <laughs> <laughs> He was supposed to be you, my ride to the wedding, and he never got there, funny, and he never picked me up. He never picked me up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He never picked me up. She, yeah, she had a car. Right, she had all been your ride, I didn't have a car. Died. I didn't, have a, I didn't have a car there. You had Quinda on all no, your, your no. sister, your mom, everyone. You were with them, right? Yeah, but we were all smushed. We've, we've all, every, all the real fans have heard this already. Let's okay, uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> all the friends have heard that. We don't cut this part out. In fact, cut this part out. Just close this part. Okay, now. Now, yeah. George, I might have been the one to put the brakes on the invitation. Mm-hmm. The master. Only because I didn't want to feel any like a uh, uh, weirdness on a really small wedding, and I didn't want to see you cry. Wait, so it was weirdness for you, not Jessica? <laughs> no, not for her. She doesn't feel weird about anything. So this was just you. She loves these guys. I was just like, no, don't invite George Bryce, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so this is all Kalila. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. she was like, yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I plan on inviting everybody. I was like, no. <laughs> George can stay. And that's why I Do you love. hate me for it? No, that's fine. Okay, good. 
Yeah. Why would you? Now, if you would have gone to the wedding, would you have been like bummed sitting there? No, nah, I would have been cool. He's already over it. He already was happy about all the news. Then why did you invite him then? Because for me, it's still I still feel it. It was yeah, palpable. we yeah we would have been. I mean, for me, it would have added it more been... humor and joy <laughs> in my heart. It would have been great. I would have laughed so fucking hard at him. Like while she's saying I do, I would take my hand out and just. <laughs> fucking give George the finger while that's happening you say like I have an objection and just flick off George <laughs> yeah 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 um, but it was a pretty I love you know I, I've only been to three weddings I think that was a four, third fourth wedding I've oh, ever nice. been to she only planned this in like four weeks and four weeks it yeah. was so hmm. cute and pretty and fun yeah it looked great yeah, yeah. ours <laughs> gonna be our, when we have one babe it's gonna be legit uh, yeah well listen to the Patreon A-list. to hear A-list. that part too. <laughs> also I wanna talk about um before Tom Rhodes gets here, that's where our guest is, and I love him. Um, did you see the Star Wars trailer? I did. Did you see it? No. I haven't. How, how do you feel about it? I was excited. Ah. Uh, I was excited. Are you one to think that The Last Jedi was one of the worst movies ever made? Uh, I did not like it. I don't think it was But do you think worst. it's one of the worst? It, do you th- admit this, though. It's the worst Star Wars movie ever made. Nope. Episode oh my two. God, you have to be out of the first three mind. with Jar Jar Binks. I'm so confused. I'd by rather you. do a Jar Jar Bunk Binks one man <laughs> show. Jar Jar, B- right underwater with all mm. his fucking. Uh, I think you're you're a little bit. You get swayed a lot by by um, public opinion because when you walked out of there, we watched it together. You were like, "Oh, that was pretty good. I liked it." Oh yeah. And then you watched all of the Galactic reviewers. Casino. Uh, and that when you watch all that the reviewers, weird. then you started to really get on their bandwagon. Oh, babe. It's the truth. <laughs> it's I'm sorry. Truth. I have to tell the world how you are. What would you think about this one, though? I, I, I just want to say this, okay, that you, maybe you are right. Maybe that there was... I, okay, I, I remember watching The Last Jedi and walking out. And you know what it is? It's like this. It's, it's, it's so hyped. And because you... The music you're so familiar with, the sound of the lightsaber you're so familiar with, you know the whole vibe of it. Yeah, it there's there's sprinkles of nostalgia, just by playing the music, and having certain characters in there like Luke mm-hmm. Skywalker, right? Mm-hmm. So you, subconsciously or whatever, you just convince yourself that this is a good movie. It's one of those movies where you have to sit down and close your eyes and think about. And then you realize, oh, nothing makes makes sense. And also, I didn't think that the Le- Princess Leia in the space thing, frozen, the Superman thing was Superman ridiculous. Mary Poppins thing was that I didn't think that that was great. I thought that was like, what the fuck is this? It was weird. And then them going to the casino thing with um, Benicio del Toro. It's like, oh, it, nothing happened, right? And then the switcheroo with the uh, was the lady with the purple hair. You know, the feminist, you know. Oh, so yeah, Jurassic Park. I thought Last Jedi was one of the worst Star Wars movie, um, but I have to give Disney and Kathleen Kennedy some props by um, getting R- Ryan Johnson out of there and and t- and telling J.J. Abrams you have to direct this, to finish it off. Mm. You have to do it because it, you still feel now. You know, I'm like, okay, uh, we're kind of in good hands, maybe. You know, and they're gonna do. Everything they can to make it up to the fans. That's all. George Lucas is supervising on some of it. That's not good news. <laughs> <laughs> that was not good news. What you just said. Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, you know. Um, I just I would really. It's that that franchise to me. I think is kind of dead in the because of the fact that, especially as an adult, mm. you want somebody to make it that's a little bit more edgy and dark right you want mm-hmm. for me you know because Empire Strikes Back was a dark movie he gets his hand chopped off he finds out the most evil person in the universe is his dad mm-hmm. right he falls remember that whole scene where he's in the cloud city he's upside down mm-hmm. with his hand off and it just dooms dooms it then his best friend is frozen into a block of ice or whatever that thing was and shipped to Jabba the Hutt. That that movie... Pretty fucked up now. That and, I, and, and I was a kid watching it, mm-hmm. so scared and so sad and devastated by it. Or the dumpster. But, but it also mm-hmm. made me walk out of the theater going, that was fucking cool. And I couldn't handle it as a kid. And now this foofy bullshit that they're doing. 
It's Disney, probably. Right? Children are far more <coughs> stronger than you think. Look at the children, like on Instagram, they're with their hoochie hoochie and all that. Oh What's the God. hoochie hoochie? You know, the kids they go to, you know, what I mean, Coachella. You looking at high schoolers? No, that's what I'm <laughs> saying. I've just heard about it. The coochie coochie. <laughs> I just heard. About it. I heard about the coochie coochie and the, the kids coochie coochie going and out. The hoochie hoochie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, yeah. you know. I love that word hoochie. Oh, so the house is coming up. So, what is he here? Um, he'll be here right at nine. That's what okay. he said. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, oh, let's stop. Let's just stop it and then. You know, I think that's a pretty good. Well, I've got a great way to solve the the Star Wars franchise. What? Well, you know how the worst, first one had like got structure from uh, Akira Kurosawa with the Hidden Fortress, yes. like telling it from the perspective of the, the uh, least important per, important characters. Yeah. Just rip off every Kurosawa plot. You know, get Han Solo in a Yojimbo type of plot. Get a Rashomon plot. Every plot has been the same for a long time. So why not just get some uh, some good plots that's in there? That's a pretty good idea. That is. Yeah. I mean, the, the, From the greatest the, okay, movies ever. I know. The Yohimbo plot, though, it's been done so many so many times in Westerns yeah. that, you know, you can't it's do, you classic. can't incorporate, but you can incorporate, I, I would like to see a Seven Samurai, maybe mm-hmm. one, where it's like um, getting a ragtag group of people to fight, Yeah, you know what I mean, the new empire, maybe. I have a question for you. Yeah. Are you the person who did this to my T-shirt? I have a. Th- I don't know who did this. <laughs> I'm gonna go grab Tom, guys. This is a sleeve, and then this one is no sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why would I do that? Who did this? I didn't do that. Why would I do that? <laughs> why would I do this? It's my favorite because that's, shirt. Because that's how what workout people do. They do the yoga, workout they stretch. Workout on just half my body. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You guys do stretches on your right side. You, wanna, you just want to show off this, side. Mark. Ooh, before Tom gets here, let's talk about one of our favorite sponsors. <laughs> Ridge Wallet. Wallet, future pocket in your, your pocket. pocket. You guys, um, Ridge Wallet, and I, you know, I, I just hope to God that they became remain our sponsors for the rest of our lives Forever. because um, I'm a gigantic fan of. Ridge wallet. That's all I use. Um, it's a slim front pocket wallet offered in carbon fiber, titanium, and aluminum. RFID protection, lifetime guarantee, free shipping worldwide. Five hundred thousand sold. Woo! Twenty-five five-star reviews. Woo! Let me say something right now. All everyone in in the Tiger Belly family that's in the upper echelons of it um, <laughs> uses a Ridge wallet because you're not in without it. But what else do they have here? They have a new thing. Yeah, they have. What do you call these things again? Like battery, battery packs, packs, mobile battery packs. I love this one. This one is so fast and so. So good it is and I'm not even kidding you the best one I've ever used yet really yeah and yeah. this they also have um, iPhone cell just phone cases right yeah. where you can also slip in your um, cards and so you don't it, it's not bulky when you keep me, it in your pocket see. and that's crazy it's like it's we're is it charged? Oh, this here, one? Yeah. Wait, wait. No, no, no. That's a, that's the one you want to use when you travel. That thing is fast. Yeah. And so good. Oh my god. And where do you put all of it? Right here with the Ridge Wallet backpack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you get you're nothing without the backpack. You're nothing without the yeah, backpack. Yeah. You're, you're a loser without the backpack. You're not the, the future. So guys, yeah, go to yeah. ridgewallet.com and use the promo code Belly for ten percent off your sleek front carry wallet or yeah. phone charger or yeah. phone case or, or Ridge Wallet backpack. Yeah, yeah. Now back to the show. Right? Yep. Five, four, four three, three, two, five, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, God, do it again, man, because i got to get my energy up, dude. Five, four, four three, three, two, one. I don't know, one. man. It's not... Five, four, three, two, one. Hey, guys. Welcome to another episode of The Tiger Belly, and we have a very special guest today because... um. You know that you know you, you know in comedy, um, there are just certain people that you you need to know, and some people that you don't need to know, <laughs> right? There are right. There are some people that you absolutely don't need to know. Like if you go to a certain towns, and some old man goes, "Yeah, my name is Skip Iverson." Skip yeah, Iverson. Yeah, and I go, "What do you do?" Oh, I'm the house MC here at the Chuckle Fuck. Sounds yeah. like an right. ESPN analyst, right? <laughs> And I, I've been doing a comedy since the seventies, right? And you're like, get the fuck out of here, Skip Chuckle Fuck. Mm-hmm. No, no I mean Skip. I love you though, Skip. I'm a big fan. But there are some people that um, you know I've been aware of for a very long time, and um, I used to live in San Diego. I grew up there, and there used to be. And I'm gonna get. I'm not gonna get the story wrong, okay? Because I know you keep correcting me whenever I do this, okay? <laughs> you keep correcting me when I do this, and I'm, I'm not gonna. Get, I'm gonna get it right. But in San Diego, um, there used to be a improv comedy club there. 
and this guy used to headline there, but I was younger, you know, I used to skateboard past it. I don't know what, I don't remember what year, because every time I say the year, he corrects me on stage. And I, uh. You also don't know how to skateboard. <laughs> Five, four, three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> Am I not right, though? I think you're right. Your gut instinct on that was correct, but you know what? I'm going to let that fly. Mm. I'm going to let my girlfriend, right, <laughs> jab me in the gut with a dagger a couple of times. Over and over. Right over again, yeah. okay? And I'm going to let it go. We had a whole we got- episode about how you're a poser and how you carried a skateboard <laughs> around, but you really don't know how to skate. There's another jab. <laughs> that was another dagger. I was just hitting fair feedback? Yeah. That was the weirdest fucking Yeah, because I heard it, too. I, I started you. talking and that hurt. I heard, I heard my own voice, <laughs> and, I, and then I was going, "I've, I've, I've crossed the threshold into insanity," because I heard "buy it, buy it, buy it" like that. I'm or, sorry, my bad. Um, but I've been a huge fan of yours, and I also the, the, I was always kind of intimidated by you before I even saw you, right? Like when I first met you at the comedy store. Is that where I first met you? Uh, yeah. Well, I, I'm not sure, but you, you know, you've always. Um, uh, you've always said really nice things to me, you know, and that you like what looked back up, look up, looked up to me back in the day. But and, I say that stuff, that's that. yeah, yeah, out loud. You do, yeah, yeah, yeah no, yeah, and it yeah. always say it always warms my heart, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like you said, God, you know, one day I want to be like Tom Rhodes and headline, the yeah, 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 like that, one hundred percent. And then when I met you, you said something. You go come to my place in by La Brea, where is you still live there? Now I live, yeah, uh, by the grove, by the by the um, yeah, yeah, by the grove. By the grove. <laughs> With your beautiful um, wife? Uh, she is divorcing me. She moved out New Year's Eve. I thought you knew that. Oh. I spent January alone in my apartment crying. Thanks for bringing that up. Jesus, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're getting divorced. Oh, yeah, sorry. the pay, uh, it should be finalized. What? Yeah, it should be finalized any day now. Oh, my fuck. I didn't know. For, uh, what? Well, that's this is a good way to start the episode. I know. I know. <laughs> this is really great. I know, but, but how would I know that you didn't tell me? Uh, well, you know, when you run into someone at the comedy store, it's you know you don't want to dump your mm-hmm. problems on them. I know, but my wife's thing is, is that you it would be something that because now I feel like a fool. No, you, what didn't, you didn't know because I because when when you guys were together, I thought to myself, oh my god, what a beautiful fucking couple! Like she was making a dinner play or whatever, and she was like very. She's got a Europe. She's from England, correct? Uh, she's from Holland. Holland. She's from Rotterdam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, her ethnicity is Indian. Yeah. She's from Suriname. Very pretty. Mm. Very like just nice. And, Where's uh, Suriname? Suriname is in England. Oh my Suriname goodness. is one of those little countries above Suriname, Brazil. Suriname. Yeah, it's actually yeah. Suriname. It's, uh, you got uh, English Guyana, French Guyana, Suriname, Venezuela. Yeah. yeah. There's Brazilians that don't even know is where it's... Suriname is and it borders their country. <laughs> That's always it's, my go-to, um, my trick question. What is? When I Surham? ask, when we, when we play geography games, Suriname is my go-to. No kidding, that's a good one. people. Uh, my mother's from Argentina, and um, I've got cousins there. I've been there four times. And my cousins in uh, Argentina, when I first got with my wife, they said, they, they should, we really want you to be with a South American woman. Yeah. And I said, I am with a South American woman. They didn't even know, wow. you know that oh. Suriname was on their own continent. Yeah. Wow. So, it's a stumper. That's a good yeah. one. I don't want to get into why. It it's actually a really good story, man. Uh, it was her idea. I was against it. And uh, she used to travel with me everywhere. She's a photographer. And, you know, I play all over the world. So uh, we were a great couple. You know, I was looking for jokes. She was looking for photos. Her thing is street photography. And then a year ago, she decided she didn't want to travel anymore. So uh, she went with me to Hong Kong, went with me to Paris. But we kind of um, lost our connection. And um, During travel, you lost your connection? Well, me being away. Oh, you being away. Oh, so yeah. when she wow. Because to when she traveled with me, it was great. Yeah. And uh, we're still really great friends. And uh, there was there's no hard feelings. She thought it would make us better artists. And uh, there was no infidelity, no major catastrophe to deal with so um we just split what we had and um i still talk to her all the time we're great friends she still lives in she la moved to san diego oh she did yeah mm. wow yeah. so you're now so like january and february was really rough for me and then um yeah march and april is a lot better I'm, how long were you married um, seven years we were together for 10 wow. oh wow that's, that's amazing yeah. Because I, well, I mean, not amazing. <laughs> that came out. Did I come out? Did I come out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That's a, no, that's not what I meant, though. 
I sometimes yeah. use words that I don't even know what they mean, really. <laughs> or I didn't. That was the wrong word for that moment. I said that was amazing. That's not amazing. <laughs> Just the yeah, but I mean, it's weird. Like, the information you know, like, is amazing. All the our couples' friends that would invite us over for like couples get together. Right. Like, you know, I'm worried like that's not going to happen now that I'm yeah. a single guy. I enjoyed being married. Yeah. And I thought I was going to be married the rest of my life. So mm-hmm. uh, it's uh, it's a surprise, and I'm starting to think that um, she really did love me by divorcing me and giving me my life back it's, yeah, oh yeah. it's kind of weird do you find that your comedy is different now or uh, yeah I mean um, I uh uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm at a. Uh, I can write the next chapter of my life, so I'm writing uh, the next hour now. So wow, uh, it's. Uh, I, I got to get rid of all the stuff I was doing about being married to yeah. a dark skinned wow. European woman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ma, do I have to leave you? <laughs> so you're. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I didn't. Like I didn't come here to. Pl- uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't come here to plant any ideas. What I'm just. Doing I'm, doing just telling, doing? I'm just telling my story. <laughs> Is that a, yeah, do yeah. I do I need to gaggers. make the sacrifice for you to be a better artist? No, no, I don't okay, think okay. so. Um, no. You know, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm good. staying. Okay. No, I mean, I, I, I think that um, when I wasn't getting when it, back in the, when I was younger and I wasn't, I had no money and I couldn't, you know, get a girlfriend or even friends for that matter. And I was a stand up. I felt like I was a lot more. Um, hungrier that's always the case right Mm -hmm. I wrote a lot more I tried different more things because I had nothing to lose and then as as time goes on you have you gather things and relationships and you build a foundation and then you you fear losing things Mm -hmm. and then you don't take as many risks and then you I, I think that what I need to do is I need to put myself in an uncomfortable situation so I can revive that side of me, but I can do it without destroying my life, I think. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Because I've seen, you know, Bill Burr does it. He's got a beautiful wife. Got a you know, baby now too. A baby, yeah. Cu- yeah, baby, and the whole thing. And then... Um, I don't believe in that. You know, to be a great artist, you have to destroy your life. You know, yeah. I think you can... That's I believe that too. Yeah. But it's easier. So was that was that the main uh, reasoning behind the separation? Is you know you'd be better artists, or was was there I more also to think it? we started to bore the shit out of each other? Oh, the last couple of years, uh, I think we were pretty set in our routine. So yeah, I think that might have had something to do with it. Right. Um, but you guys are still you're good and all. Still that great stuff. friends. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. her dearly. She loves me dearly, and um, you know I wanted to succeed. Where she's still helping me with few projects and um she still edits my podcast helps oh, me put cool, it out we're, cool. we're tight okay good 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 yeah because you're like uh, it's you, weird you know like when gwyneth paltrow and that chris martin guy broke up uncoupling? when i heard the con- the words conscious uncoupling i wanted to vomit i thought that was like the, <laughs> the most pretentious thing i had ever heard in my life i would never use that terminology what does that myself. mean what, 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 do you, what for term was it conscious uncoupling where it's sort of an amicable decision to part ways without you know putting in a lot of thought and not too much a uh, bad feeling involved it's like uh, a conscious way to separate and do good for each other for whatever partnership you to have to break up kids. and still be friends yeah, yeah. yeah. and I, I've got an old gay friend and I was talking to him about it and he said uh, you know that's 80% of gay relationships end like that mm-hmm. where you still care about the person and you don't want to destroy them and you don't want to hate them and, right you know um, it's yeah, but it's I've maturity but I've you know here's the thing with me is that I've been in relationships as well and we, I've broken up, obviously, as well. Mm-hmm. And then, but for me, and, and there's no hard feelings. You know, me, I don't have any hard feelings toward Christine or Sarah or any of my pre- previous girlfriends. Do I see them and talk to them? No. But there's a difference, though, because I am, two, one of my, two of my best friends in my life happen to be my exes. When we went to the wedding this weekend, two of them were at the wedding. We share a lot of friends in common. Who, Matt and who? Gardo. Oh, that's right, Gardo. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's because I think that's a testament to the friendship we truly had during the relationship. My other exes, I couldn't give two shits about. I couldn't, I wouldn't, you know, stop to think or worry about what they're doing with their lives. But I think that's a testament to the lack of friendship we had during that relationship. So if yeah. you can 
if I mean, for it sounds like you guys were truly friends to each other. I we we genuinely loved each other. Yeah, and uh, I think it's a rarity. And yeah, it's it's. Uh, I'm I'm glad you uh, you know what I'm talking about. Also, my first love of my adult life. Uh, Natalie, this French woman that I lived with in, in San Francisco for seven years, I'm still great friends with her. I've been yeah. my whole life. Where's Natalie now? In San Francisco. Ah, uh. yeah. She bought the. We had, we lived on the top floor of this old Victorian mansion. Yeah. She bought it in like 1997 for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I think it's worth six million now. Oh She's wow! One of the happiest people. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's awesome. And her and her mom, like, I got so much. And even uh, Ashna is my wife. I'm still very close with her mother and the family. I, I love all those people. Yeah. I don't I don't ever want to cut them out of my life. Exactly. Like why know? should those have to disintegrate if you've built ten years of this life together? All of that doesn't have to disappear. Yeah. But you don't seem and I'm gonna say something to you, and you might not like it. Oh great. But I, it's a coming from love. Mm -hmm. I just realized that you don't you're the you don't seem like a typical comedian at all hmm. like now that I think about it <laughs> I you are always so kind of honest you know like you like you'll just walk up to me hey you're just you, there's nothing weird about you there's no ulterior motive there's no like you don't try to shame like the other I'm not night petty and yeah Steve <laughs> Byrne <laughs> I was talking scary. I was with you know the uh, Jeff for, just for laughs yeah the, the guys that book it and they, they came up to me and they went um, hey congratulations we, we, we're so stoked that this could work out because I'm going to Montreal for the very first time this year you've oh, never done much right. I find that hard to believe yeah exactly and wow. then Steve Byrne walks up and goes yeah but you're not going to care because he hasn't written a joke since 2002 Jesus oh. right so he you know I and he's, Steve why would he I know I'm just saying like all that. comics slam you in that way mm. to like make just belittle you a little bit and you kind of go ha <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a good one, man. I'm gonna get my revenge on you. Now it's a war, you know. But you—that's all of them do that. Even like you know, Billy Burr has said. Little... That's funny. I, 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 I love Steve. He's I love a great him too. friend of mine. And I've—I uh, always thought you know, I, I put him up there as uh, like one of the classiest people in comedy. Right. But he did do that. And then today I'm gonna show you. But he showed you. I'm gonna show you something, right? So today he texted me, right? This is what he texted me, right? He goes, um, he goes. So last night he it was happening last night. So he, last night GFL he kind of you know what I mean. And then today he goes, "Yo, I have a favor to ask you. I have a documentary film about the amazing Jonathan being released at ATC on Monday. Whatever. Was wondering if I could drop by your podcast to promote it on the first or second week of June. And it took me eight hours to finally go yes. <laughs> Is that your retaliation? Revenge? <laughs> yeah, because in those eight hours without me, it's him just sitting. Because I, I know he's the type of goes. I called you yesterday. You didn't call me back. He's one of those guys. So I waited eight hours. It's in glee. It feels good. And then finally, not much. Just yes, no period, nothing. Right. But so. <laughs> it's a weird way. To it's a very good weird way. But the thing is, is that I I have like little things. You know what I mean? Like passive aggressive. Like I think comics are passive aggressive, and they, you know, they they poke and prod, and they have their issues. But you are nothing like any of them. Uh, well, I mean, maybe I just keep my issues well hidden. No, I don't think that. I think that I think that you're just you know a special breed. Like even you know when he was coming on this podcast for months, I've been saying I have to have him on the podcast. We got to figure to fit him in. Mm -hmm. Right, and people are going, yeah, we'll get him in eventually. I go, no, because he, because he's different. Mm -hmm. You know, he, you know, I can't explain it. He's just, you know, a different kind of a profity kind of a guy. Profit. Yeah, because people at the store, you know, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> you know what check I mean? out that profit. I know, but that's, I'm not saying I'm not, I'm not saying that you know, you know, to to blow you know smoke in your ass. I was up your ass or in your ass. Hey, it's, That's it's very going direct. in regardless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know what the term. How does the term go? Up, up, up your ass. Blow. Yeah. yeah uh, so, and here's another thing about you is that you, you disappear a lot. Yeah. Well. Yeah. It's, um, you know, it's a good way not to get on people's nerves is to disappear. For a while. <laughs> but the you, guys who are always around you are irritating. <laughs> when I, and I told yeah, yeah. you, I mean, and I'll blow some smoke up your ass. I told you, I did that at, at Israel tour in December, and I took my 80 year old Jesus freak mother with me to Jerusalem. 
Wow. Uh, if I wasn't the favorite child before. <laughs> I think I got, I think You're a prophet. Got You're a prophet. Up. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we went over a week early and, uh, uh, and you know, we took her, saw all the sights and, you know, where Jesus was crucified and all that good, happy stuff. Yeah. And uh, so then the tour started and we were in, and I shared a hotel room with my mother for two weeks. Wow. Which, uh, yeah, which was pretty Christ-like, I have to say. What is that like? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it was good. I love my mom, you know? Of course. And it was kind of, it was cute. Like I did when the tour started, she'd wait up and talk to me about it and everything. But so we were watching television in Tel Aviv and that Sacha Baron Cohen movie, The Dictator, was on. Yeah. And uh, you're in it. Yeah. And you're hilarious. Uh. And I watch it with my mother. We're like in the two beds. You know, she's on her bed. I'm on my bed. And we're yeah. watching this. And we're both laughing our asses off. Yeah. And I was like, uh, I go, that guy's a friend of mine. Oh. Uh, really? She said that? I said that. Oh. Why would she say <laughs> yeah, that? Oh, I mean, Tom, look at my, my Korean no, friend. No, no, <laughs> I meant to say she said really that's what I'm saying that's yeah, what, yeah, yeah no it was awesome yeah. it was like really great memory oh cool you know? that's a weird watching it, uh, that watching you be funny with my mom in Tel Aviv is that's cool that's a memory what's well, cool that cherish. you're there with her and also that slab I went there too so you're up there with Jesus getting crucified is what I'm telling you oh. <laughs> well thank you but that place where they go where they where he was crucified how do they know that because I went there too I've been in that spot too how do they know that that's the spot where he was crucified I, you know, hey, who knows? Do they know for sure? No, of course not. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. Well, that's what it's called? That's the church that they built around the spot. And wow. then there's the, um, uh, like the, well, it's it's they're, they're like there's a couple spots in that church where it's like, no way that they were that close to each other. Yeah. You know? We were in a room in Jerusalem and they're like, and I still lit up a cigarette. I told this story before. Mm -hmm. With Steve Byrne, right? Yeah, with Steve Byrne. I lit up a cigarette because I didn't know where the fuck we were. And the guy was like, can you take the t um, you know, smoke outside of this building? Because this is where the Last Supper was. <laughs> right? And, I'm, and, uh, and I go, <clears throat> ashing it. I go, okay, sorry, man. <laughs> like, But in my head, I'm like, how the fuck do they know that this is where Spawn is? But I guess they know. Maybe there was crumbs left over from the dinner. You smoked in that room? I was in that room. Really? Yeah, I did smoke in that room, yeah. I'm sure the apostles smoked. Right. <laughs> That's a good point. Thank you. They had pipes you could and stuff hit with, with that. that. Yeah. Yeah, with goat weed or what do they smoke up back mm -hmm. then? Incense. Mm -hmm. Incense? Yeah, of course. Incense. <laughs> they smoke incense all the time. What do you what do you think frankincense was? It was a bag of weed. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. so you're defending a fucking no, flat face here. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> you let him call you. <laughs> hey. Yeah. When you're flat face, you're flat face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the rules of the room. Man. Oh, the you things got, you got I say. pink face, flat yeah. face. You have ever. curvature? Yeah, I would Damn, say you have. He is a different type of guy. I know, I told you, man. I told Anytime, you. I any told any you other like, comedians yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, look at that flat yeah, 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 I'm not. I'm not buying that. <laughs> I don't know. Damn. Damn. We're not used to decent people in this I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're blowing my mind right yeah, now. I know. He's a, he's a good dude. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Peter. you're a decent man. Jesus. Sorry to interrupt, but the well, Slup Don't ever interrupt me again. I'm sorry, but... Well, it did better be good. The Slup Kingdom has to hear the presidential address from you. Dun, dun, dun. Ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your president. Well, I don't know what you're saying, but I'm going to just say this, okay? Mm -hmm. Is is that um, one of my favorite things to do now is to do the Patreons, mm. because the Patreons are done um, in not profession professionally, but not in this room. We do it like in places like my Kalila and I will do it in the bed, mm -hmm. or I'll go to a green room at a comedy club and do them. Mm -hmm. But these are my favorite clips of some of the past previous uh, Patreons that I've done. Check it out. I have a lot of New Year's resolutions and I'm being really dead serious about it. I am going to stop taking plastic lighters and feeding them to dolphins. Uh, and when I nut... I and salute. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apologize! <laughs> Apologize to Kalai. Apologize to my girlfriend! I have a really deep, dark secret. What is it? It might ruin the, the family. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> Yo, you idiot, right George. Oh, look at your face. Oh, that was the best. I just realized I've never told this story before in my whole I life. I want to hear all of it. Whoa, those were juicy clips. To listen to more of Tiger Belly on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash Tiger Belly. Enjoy the rest of the show. I want to try to get to why you went to Amsterdam and because you went away for a while. Like, we didn't see you for many years, right? You were living abroad. Yeah, well, so when the show finished, uh, we did we did one full season. So I had lived in New York City like a dog, 
when I was 20 years old. And I always swore if I ever lived there, if I ever had any money, I would live in New York City with style. So when the Mystery Road show finished, I had a truckload of money. Nice. So I looked at that money as my NBC artist grant. And I moved back to New York City. <laughs> yeah. I got a rock star apartment in the Wall Street area. And Ooh. I just really focused on doing stand-up in, in New York, which now was great because I... Uh, the comedy seller loves me and I was just there last week doing I try and go there at least one week a year to do um, spots to do spots yeah. and it's from living there 98 to 2000 wow and uh, and I focus on 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 stand up in New York I did some road stuff but also I started taking systematic trips to London because I wanted to get in with London uh, one of my oldest best friends Rich Hall was living over there and was in and he helped me, coached me how to get in. You don't go to the best clubs first. You go to the peripheral rooms, get your sea legs, find out what references work, what doesn't work. And then on your second or third trip over, then you go to the best clubs. Wow. So I got in with London and then I started playing. I was like doing mostly New York and London for a couple of years. Wow. And then when, once I got in with London, that was the key to the international circuits for me. And then I started playing all over Europe and Asia and Australia. And uh, I, I played in Amsterdam and I, I, I met a Dutch woman, not the woman that I married. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> and I moved there. Wow. And uh, yeah, the relationship lasted for two years. And like every most comedy relationships, uh, the travel killed it. And I was just about to move back to the United States when these people from this Dutch television network uh, saw me performing at a club in Amsterdam called Tumler. And they were looking for an American to host a late night talk show. And I got the job. And I got to stay in this little country that I had fallen in love with. How long? Did, how long? So that show lasted for two years. Yeah. And that was a, I mean, uh, I, I, you know. I mean, you. Well, I'll tell you, you know, it's really amazing. Like, uh, how I was. How much pussy did you get? It was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. It was incredible. I, I, were you with, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> now, were you with this Dutch woman during the show when you were doing no, the talk show? She so broke. you were single. Yes. Oh my! I, I can imagine what was going on. I had, I had, I had been freshly dumped. Yeah. And then I get to, stay, you know, and it was really great too because I was a, a big thing of the show was I was a foreigner experiencing Dutch culture. Yeah. So like every episode, I would make a five minute film where I would, you know, one day I spent with a Dutch farmer. He said, "Look out for the electric fence in Dutch," but I don't yeah. speak Dutch, so I got electrocuted. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, all these funny, like I was given a, 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 a tour of the, the gay nightlife scene of Amsterdam oh, by, the, wow. by the guy who does the gay parade, a former prostitute who um, helps the, 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 the prostitutes with their health care and mm -hmm. taxes and things, uh, gave me a tour of the red light district. And, and, you know, they so they explained the laws to me, how things work. You know, with the drugs, with the government, everything of Dutch culture was explained to me. And yeah. It, it was a really beautiful thing about the show. Wow. <clears throat> so that lasted for two years. And if that was not fortuitous enough, when that ended, the same network, actually the woman who ran the network, um, Monica Galler, beautiful woman. Uh, and she's, her son is the one who discovered me. And he was the producer and one of the main writers of the late night talk show. And, but she... So he discovered me. She's really who put me on Dutch television. And then it was her idea uh, to put me on this, um, be it, let me be a presenter on uh, a Dutch travel show for a year. So I, was, I got to, uh, I did a highlight on St. Petersburg, Russia, on Peru, the Champagne region of France, the Dutch Caribbean. Uh, wow. It was like the, it was a, everything that she wants to do. It yes. was a dream job. Everything, yeah, she wants to do. Yeah. Now you've been around Asia a lot. I've been everywhere in Asia. Where do you? What like city? Yeah, that, that sounds like a pickup line. I'm curious because my yeah, I'm from the, um, my friends in the Philippines are starting to really um, try to produce shows and stand up shows in the Philippines in Manila, not just on a smaller scale, on a bigger scale, but it isn't quite catching on, and they can't. Uh, well, you got the old thing of the 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 gay um, yeah, transsexuals. Yeah, transsexuals. A lot of comedy. Philippine people yeah. think that that's stand up comedy. And, and, <laughs> and those guys still kind of dominate it. The one place that brings in foreign headliners is called Heckle and Jekyll. Hmm. Uh, wonderful guy who, um, he's got connections with Holland. Um, or he had lived in Holland, but he's from Manila. Really uh, great guy. But that's the but main... But do you feel like they're catching on um, that stand-up comedy is uh, a little... Now they are. I mean, but like, like 10 years ago, 
I think the first time I went to Manila was probably 20 years ago, and then I was just there last year. Because he, they've been begging Bobby to go, or at least my friends have. Yeah, because, and, but I'll tell you why. And I, he I, just doesn't think he's he's a draw out there. And I, because I, I, I go to the Philippines, and it's and like... Everyone knows you there. Because of the movies you've done, you could probably play a really nice theater there. I don't care. I, that, that's not the point. <laughs> What's the, the point? The point is, is that, you know, it's the same reason why I don't want to play London ever. Why okay. Not? I'll tell you why. London's great. Because, you know, the comics that I know that play there have a certain style of like, I heard that, first of all, there's a lot of heckling in in English rooms. Is that yeah, true? Yeah, yeah, they're pugilistic. They're, yeah. Whatever and, that and, word. They're, they're, and, and already, if they use that word, <laughs> you're lost. I'm lost. A pugilaka? I don't know. A you pugilist know I mean? so is I'm, someone who likes to fight. Uh, I don't ever fuck talk to me like that again, okay? <laughs> By the way. But my point is is that, so like I heard there's a lot of heckling, right? And I don't know if my shit would translate. And there's just like, I've been, you know, I did it in um, South Africa for mm-hmm. two months. I think the first time I ever did stand up, you know, you know, out of the country. And it went over okay, but... Um, but you weren't, how long ago was that? I don't know, 12 years or 10 years ago. Okay, yeah, so yeah, you yeah, probably yeah. didn't have your star power then that you do now. I no, I was on my height, actually. That was more because I had, that was after Mad TV. Okay. That was ap- that was during when I was doing movies and stuff. I it's, think you'd love it, man. And, uh, you know, you guys travel together and take these to play around Europe and stuff. I, you, you could do a nice tour there. And I don't, like, if in club level, they heckle a lot. If it's they're going to see someone they adore in a theater, they're not going to heckle. It's different. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't think you should I be so know, afraid of it. When you say theater, it's like in my head, it's like I can't fucking no, you sell know out you the fucking. Play in London is the El Paso so- comic strip. The Soho <laughs> yeah, theater <laughs> where? What? Yeah, the Soho theater in London is is pretty hot now. Um, How many seats is it? One hundred and fifty. You can handle. I that. think you can handle that. And it's in the Soho it's the theater district. It's fantastic. It's a great room. You played it. Played it twice. It's great. Because I used to only do clubs in London, and that last time, last two times I was there, I did the Soho Theater. Yeah, <coughs> maybe I think I think that uh, uh, there's Tiger Belly fans. There's a lot. There's a lot. That's in there's England. A lot England. In England. And um, in the UK. You know, listen, guys, I'm open. Well, to... Well, then come see me <laughs> at the Bill Murray Comedy Club, May 14th, and I think June 4th. Where? Going solo. It's it's in. Um, Camden Town. It's uh, Angel Comedy Club, and I think the room is called the Bill Murray. Oh, well, what a great and that's in name. England. Cool, that's May in England? May 14th and in London. In London, wow. Yeah. That's where you're going? I'm going to, uh, I'm going <laughs> to, oh, I'm opening for Reginald D. Hunter for all of May and June for his UK tour. Ah. Uh, He's an American comic who, uh, he started over there. I know I met is. him 20 years ago. I know he is. Brilliant guy. Brilliant guy. He's from Georgia in the States, and he's got this really great philosophical style. He's been a great friend of mine. And he's massive in England, makes BBC specials, and he. Uh, I did this comedy festival with him in Ireland, and um, that's the one he, that Dom Irera does all the time. No, that's Kill Kenny. Uh, the one I did was was uh, Galway Comedy Festival. Galway, and then in July I'll be doing the Dublin festival. There's great festivals in Ireland. First of all, I just got invited to Montreal. Let's just ease first. up on that too, okay? <laughs> when you first get invited to Montreal, which is this is the first year, yeah. Let me just ease into that one, okay. you know. Because I, I feel like I took different – what I love about my voyage and everyone's voyage is different. And my voyage was always just different than most other people's. And that's what I like about you because you have a, a specific thing. I've been avoiding fame. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you've had your path, right? Yeah. And my path has been always a little different. And I, you know, you know I've never been like – the hot guy that everyone talks about. Like I can, I remember back in the day when you know Zach and Nick Swartzen went to Montreal back. We were all in the same age and mm-hmm. demographic, and they were getting all deals, and I was still a doorman. And years went by, and I still never went. Right, and then they were doing the Tonight Show. People were doing like late night shows. I did the Tonight Show, but I had to go the back route. Like I had to befriend the two guys. Right. And just try to win them over with just me being, you know what I mean? Funny, you know? And um, and is there resentment? There's a little. There's still a little, <laughs> little bit of resentment that I have about, you know, having had had to do things in a different way. You know, like when I, you know, when people audition for Mad TV, 
you know, Tarrant or like Frank Caliendo just got it, right? And then I auditioned 12 times in one year. <laughs> like I had to go back every week and go through these hurdles. We're just not sure. Can you come back? Yeah, that's what I'm I mean, that's what it was. And you, you, you're sitting there like for the eighth time going, you think you say to yourself, this is the last, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. I, I, I haven't slept in eight weeks. Yeah. And then you do it again and they go, can you come back next week but be better? And then you then you test and they, and they call you and they say, they're going to give it to Taryn Killen, but just go in there and do your best. And they give it to both you and Taryn, right? So... You know, I feel like everything that I've done, but yeah, I'm not feeling bad for myself because, you know, I, yeah, I'm here, I'm still, I am still in it, and I have a beautiful girlfriend, and I'm and friends got, with Tom And Rose. you got the Tonight Show, and you got the, I did you, all the things. You got yeah. the Mad TV. You were, I did everything. So even though you had to go a longer route and everything, you still, you you had these achievements. But, but, don't, don't, but don't you, but, but don't you, but, 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 don't, but don't you want to have an easier path one no. time? No, not at all. No, you want to get one call, go, you got the movie, lead. No. Why? Because sometimes when opportunity is thrust upon you before you're ready, yeah. you're not able to fully um, take advantage of that opportunity. Yeah. I think that it, you okay. need to grind it out. So when it when it meets you, you're prepared. Yeah. Okay. That, and that's why I have a great fucking girlfriend with a voice of wisdom, man. You know? So you got a lot of family in the Philippines? <laughs> We just came back from the Philippines. Oh, did you really? Because I have a question there. for you. Yeah, so yeah. my uh, mother and father were divorced many years ago. Mm -hmm. And my father remarried a woman from the Philippines. Yeah. And brought over her, her two kids mm -hmm. from the Philippines, DJ and May May. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, uh, DJ. And they call me Cool Ya Tom. That's so cool. So, Kuya Tom. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Tom. Yeah. What does that mean? Kuya is older like, brother. Oh, it's Kuya a Tom, sign okay. of respect. respect. Oh. Yeah. So um, I, uh, I, I'm going to ask you this point blank. Mm -hmm. Do you eat the chicken bones? Um, you know, <laughs> let me tell you, that's a real question. And that's how we got all that puss. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. I have yeah. never seen a better chicken eater. Yeah. Than my mother or myself or my sister. In fact, I was flabbergasted the first time I ever saw him eat a piece of chicken. I thought, <laughs> what are you doing? That's you ate. You ate nothing. And he's like, no, it's done. I'm like, give mm. me your fucking bones. I'll show you how it's done. Yeah. You have to eat the cartilage and then you break it because you suck. The, the marrow doesn't come out soft, mm -mm. but you do have to suck on the chicken bone for the flavor. Yeah, so I did it. So I did it when I was in Manila. The, I, I, I told the story about my, my family and I, I, I adore them. They're beautiful people. Uh, but they eat the chicken bones. And, uh, you know, when, uh, when, 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 when you and I eat chicken, we get to the the bone and, and we say to ourselves the meal is over people from the Philippines say we have now arrived at the crunchy part <laughs> yeah also we have names and you eat, you eat the shrimp heads too right we, oh, well I here I'll give you so, the names so I talked to people in the Philippines about it and they get, when they get, like uh, brought up the bones thing and they go that's the tastiest part. Yeah, you got to yeah. eat the all the entire animal. In fact, we have names like when you go on the side of the road and you see like little we call them barbecue han where they barbecue like the meats on the side, and they have names for different uh, chicken parts. So if you order Adidas, that's chicken feet. Mm -hmm. If you order Walkman, if you order the Walkman, that's more of like the chicken's head. The head. So you know we we like to utilize the whole animal. I love it. So, uh, oh, by the way, I brought you my new album. It's um, called Around the World, and there's the Manila track is on there. That's the digital download. So, uh, my new album is called Around the World. Wait, wait, what, so what, okay, uh, is that why you're here to promote this? Uh, well, I, I just thought, I know, but gonna say this, he's not we, very tech savvy. He doesn't we are gonna know get to that point. Okay, you said yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we have to go right them. now or something? No, not yeah, at all. I wasn't even. We close were talking to about being. Manila. I, no, I'm not right, leaving. So I got all night. Tom Rhodes, right? He gave me a, a, a business card. Very smart. No, I know. It's Tom Rhodes around the world. It's a digital download, right? TomRhodes.net is where they go, right? Can, uh, can I say well, this? You get the album on iTunes or Amazon. Yeah, and Amazon. And here's the. Oh my, this is my. Yeah, it's my access code, right? Yeah. This access code is mine, so I can just download it's yours, it. Yeah. Well, thank only, you so much. I'm gonna listen you. to it. Thank yeah. you. But can I say? I want to say that that you um you play you know because when you came back from you know. You know, your European, you know, hoity toity thing that you were doing, you know, um, <laughs> hoity -toity. whatever, the good life. And you came back to LA. I had to drink tea with my pinky. Up <laughs> yeah. That you, um, you know, came and, you know, you're just so f still fucking hilarious. And you're like, you have tell jokes. You're not like somebody's ambiguously 
funny. You're very just funny. Your your bits have endings and switches. No, I'm, I'm being real. Like yeah, I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. And you're it's just fun to watch. And um, it just was c- cool seeing you come around again because it's like, you know, I I. I w- I'm a fan, and um, I love co- comics, and I love your generation. Like when I see, because you know, I'm friends with Margaret's on this podcast. I love Patton. Yeah, I love all those guys, you know. And um, Steve Kravitz was way before you, right? Way before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we haven't had Steve Kravitz. Maybe never happened. Now, did but... you have the chicken bone? Did you taste it? I have. Did yeah. you try it? I can only do the small ones. Did bones. you enjoy it? Yeah. You, you understand yeah. why we, we, we suck on the chicken bone. Yeah. I do. I think it's adorable. It's like you guys are 60, oh. <laughs> you guys but you are don't like agree that it's flavorful. Right now, like over chicken bones. Uh, yeah. It it's is. so obvious. I, you know. Um, There's like some I'm sort not, of I'm sexual not. thing going on. It's so fucking obvious. <laughs> I love <laughs> chicken fucking bones. <clears throat> I, uh, I, 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 won't, I won't go for the, the shrimp heads, but I'll, I'll eat the small I'll chicken bones. shrimp head with, fuck nut. Well, the shrimp head, you <laughs> usually like fry it so much so that the heads become just crunchy. Yeah. And so you just it it feels it tastes like the rest of the shrimp. It's very good. Yeah. Well, I just think it's cool that I have you know Philippine family. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Do you try balot, the egg? The duck, uh, the duck embryo. And see how no, he she responded. Makes this one dish. See how we responded to your of. question. He saw right through you. <laughs> Did you see that? I, I think so. You just be quiet. Go ahead, baby. <laughs> I I I I, I uh, go ahead, sweetheart. I, I missed there. the question because of the uh, lovely curvature of your face. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Wow! You hiring interns or anything? <laughs> wow! You gonna ch- jump ship and go to his fucking podcast? I mean, he'll, yeah, he'll yeah. take me to Europe. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh. we're just two different kinds of people. That's all. We run our business in two different kinds of ways. You know. So, um, I'm sorry about um, your relationship. It's but okay. you know, I know, I know. But I still feel bad. I feel bad about. No, if you'd have talked to me a couple months ago, I I would have been a different person. Yeah, now I feel good about it. Yeah, but that's still like I just thought that was gonna be a forever thing. And um, yeah, I do too. I have another question for you before we end. Um, why don't you watch Game of Thrones? <laughs> oh, okay. So I watched the first episode, and once they threw the kid off the top of the building, mm-hmm. um, I was done. Anything with kids really disturbs me. Mm. You know, when you read about kids getting you know murdered or. You know, uh, molested or something. Uh, it uh, shit like that bothers me. And you know what? More kids die. A so lot of kids dying. So okay. The show. Okay. So check it out. So so yeah. So I didn't really get through that first episode when they threw the kid off the top of the building. And then somebody told me I've had conversations with it. That kid ends up. He comes back. He lived. Mm. Whatever. So then I was on the road somewhere a couple years later. And uh, flipping through the channels and HBO, there was Game of Thrones was on. I thought, you know what? I'm going to give this another chance. I'm going to sit here. They burned alive a 12-year-old girl. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That was the next one I saw. <laughs> Is there so really? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? I know, I know, I know. Yeah. So they were going to win some war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then yeah. the mom was okay with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, that's Shireen. Shireen, yeah. Shireen, yeah. 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 So the only... The only two episodes you saw, <laughs> yeah. two kids got hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah okay. You know what? That was a particularly it. painful episode. Painful episode. I, I actually, yeah. that was hard too. That was a hard one. Yeah, so those were the only ones I've seen. I know. You should see the episode where Ollie dies too. Yeah, yeah. Ollie's another kid that died. Yeah, yeah. But the show is great. If you ever find I'm it in gonna, your heart, I, I think I, you know, I, I think um, I, I think I'll start at the beginning and give it a shot. It's really know? good. Yeah, everybody's it really, obsessed. It really, with I'm obsessed with. But that. you know what? I think is better than Game of Thrones. My new album is recorded <laughs> 24 <laughs> cities around the world. It starts in Paris. It yeah. ends in Ooh, Jerusalem. Wow. There's 40 tracks. It's three hours long. Some people said, "Why didn't you just break it up into three albums?" No. This is the concept for the album. Wow. Uh, so there's the there's three Paris tracks, uh, you know, there's three Hong Kong tracks. Now, it's, how do you know, you know, that they're they're in Hong Kong? Do they laugh differently? Or do you say that they're in Hong Kong? At the beginning of Like I, when they laugh, they go, ka, 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 like, is that Hong Kong? I, uh, or, or how do you know you're in Hong Kong? Well, like in, at the beginning, you know, I said, uh, hello, Hong Kong. And I, oh, you I, say, hello, Hong Kong. Yeah, so I... But maybe you can, but, but is there any way you can probably, you know what I mean? Tell, but just by the laugh, what country they're in. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of I, I, there's a lot of different I, 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 foreign I, 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 laughs on there. You know, uh, Scandinavia, Berlin, yeah, yeah, Oslo. Okay. Well, I don't know. 
Switzerland. It's, yeah. um, and I, you think I'm now? Very you, proud now of it. so, I think I think it's, it's going to be great. Ever, and I'm going to plug it in a second. I think it's the best. But you're doing. I understand what you're doing right now, and you're squeezing it in. But the thing is, is that I have some other questions. Okay. Oh, okay. But about you, it. you said we were about to say goodbye. You <laughs> we're not saying goodbye you, because you said you had end. one more question for me, and that really, was about Game of the, Thrones. Is, so I yeah, thought you were rushing me out. I'm not rushing you out. I'm okay. not going to rush you out. Oh, good. I have right. nowhere to go. Yeah, I have yeah, my yeah, wife yeah. to yeah. go home to. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sad. It's so sad. Um, so you <laughs> filmed this around the world. I'm no. lonely. No, 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 no. Not no with the chicken bones with fucking Kalila. I'll make you great. I'll make you chicken bones tonight. No, you're not making no chicken bones for nobody. All right. So did you filmed this around the world. It's audio. I recorded it. <laughs> no shit, it's audio, Tom. But you said filmed it. You said you whatever. Filmed it. Oh. You said uh, you yeah, filmed, yeah, you filmed it, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I have a couple more questions? Please, Can I, let's. What's the difference between now? Do you, because because you've been in the game for so long, what is the difference now in the comedy? business that's different than it was back in the day oh it's so much better now i mean you know number one it was a white male dominated thing and then it was really this there was a lot of uh kind of generic hacky white guy shit it was like all these guys wore blazers rolled up to the elbow and the bolo ties in the 80s yeah yeah a lot of men and women relationship stuff and now it's great. There's there's so many brilliant female comedians. There's there's just every ethnicity and and sexual orientation. And there's so many great voices now. You know, and I mean, there are and, and in all these different countries too. I've got that's the great thing about me doing the international circuits for twenty years is I have great comedian friends of every ethnicity mm. and sexual orientation all over the world. Wow. And it's I really love that. Yeah. Um, there's also different ways of getting your stuff out there that wasn't available to you in the eighties. Like online, yeah, like to make you know to, to make an album. Yourself, yeah. You know, I could do that concept, and um, you know, it's you know, you can make a podcast. You can, it's it's so much better now in every way. Yeah, it's so you know, the podcast taught me Tiger Belly for fans. I love you, but it got me closer to my real fans. Yeah, people discovered me on just this. They didn't even know what I did in the past. And when they come to the show, right, there's a different level of connection. They wear my shirts. You know what I mean? They say the little lingos. Either George has a pink dick or nosotros papaya or whatever. I'm like, they call me Slep King mm -hmm. from, this, from the audience. And when I do a meet and greets afterwards, pe some people, um, they get kind of emotional. And I like that. I like it too. And they know personal details about you. It's really incredible. To get emotional. And, um, you know, it's the thing I, I love about comedy, you know, it's, you know, it's really like an exclusive club of fighter pilots, uh, the people who can do it, and the people who can do it very well is even smaller. And it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor or black or white or whatever, you know, it just matters if you're funny. So yeah, that's it's the thing about it that I've always loved. It's the, it's the great equalizer. It's funny that you say that because there was times where I thought anyone can do it. Mm -hmm. In my head, not true. It's not true, but still, I thought, why just get up there and do it? Especially right? getting through those first ten years where you're struggling right. and not making any money. Right. That's most people can't get past the first year. But there was a couple of young people that hang out at the store. You, you know, there's a, like young guys and girls that hang out at the store that's never never done stand up, but they want to. You can always tell who they are because they're just always there. And you ask, hey, do you do stand up? And they go, yeah, but we want to. But you know, that's why we come all the time or whatever that might be. And there's this one dude, I keep, every time I'm there, he's there. And for the last year, I've been saying, dude, have you gone up yet? And he's just like, I just can't, I just so, I can't do it. I'm so nervous, mm. right? Which makes me realize that it, I guess it is difficult. Oh my God, it's difficult. She did it 12 times. No, no, no. I was forced to do it 12 times. I know, but you went up 12 wanted, times. That's he, why in my head, I'm like, oh, he, she's brave. He wanted to conduct a social experiment. Because I, I think that I'm a fairly eloquent person. So he was like, okay, fine, you know, why don't you try stand up a couple times? I got up there and it was the most agonizing experience of my life. Number one, I wasn't funny. Nothing. I was. I had garbled speech. That's not what people I said. I was sweating That's like a maniac. Said. I've had people say she was good. No, I was terrible. I was absolutely They say he's terrible, terrible. all the time. <laughs> people come up to me, Dad, I saw that guy. But he's I was terrible. so humbled and it made me appreciate so much what he does day in and day out. And I never want to ever, ever do that again. So the experiment has to be over. It's but done. you did it 12 times. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Yeah, but yeah. it was terrible. He's done it? Mm -hmm. But he was great. He's great. Then, you were, yeah. You, yeah. The only one that hasn't done it in this room is Bryce. Bryce, yeah. His time will come. It's why your time will come, you know. 
So how we end our, yes, our podcast, fighter Tom, is you guys we, are fighter pilots. we do something called um, Unhelpful Advice, and we have an email. I also want to plug your, what you, where, how do they find your podcast? Uh, Tom Rhodes Radio Smart Camp. It's um, iTunes, um, whatever, Stitcher. Are you with ATC too? I am, yeah. Okay, oh, yes. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you're yeah. part of our family. Yeah. yeah. We're ATC as well. Yeah. Mm. And TomRhodes.net. Um, I'm crushing it on Instagram. At Ooh. underscore Tom Rhodes. Mm -hmm. You can scroll back and see me and my mother in Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah. Follow him on that. <laughs> um, like, if you really scroll abrupt. further back, you can see the motorcycle accident I had 45 miles north of Hanoi last April. Oh, shit. Wow. What happened? To your, what happened? Uh, I've been terrified of motorcycles my whole life. I had a wreck when I was 14 on a dirt bike. Um, and then I was afraid of them my whole life. And then when I was filming in Peru for that Dutch travel show... Uh, we were at the Nazca Lines, and uh, this guy let me ride his motorcycle around the Nazca Lines. So I kind of got over my fear a little bit, and the dude who runs the gigs in Hanoi also gives motorcycle tours of the north of Vietnam. So my wife Ashna's brother teaches motorcycle um, lessons in Rotterdam. So last two summers ago, I'd spent an afternoon with him taking lessons, and I thought that was enough to go on a... <clears throat> You know, Hanoi. hundred mile right Ooh. North Vietnam <laughs> motorcycle tour, and that was the fourth time I had ever been on a motorcycle in my life. And the guy uh, who runs the gig and the tour, uh, he got behind me and started filming me thirty seconds before I crashed. Yikes! Oh. And so you're, it's on camera that yeah. you crashed. <laughs> All right, follow um, Tom Rhodes right now. You have to see the disaster. It's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it's awesome. And I was wearing a helmet. I didn't well, get you hurt. hurt. You didn't get hurt at all then. No, I just skinned my elbow a little bit. Oh, poor yeah. baby. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we do this email thing called unhelpful advice. People call, call in for, with problems, and we try to answer. Okay. Unhe so, unhelpful advice with Bobby, Kalila, and Guya Tom. There he is. <laughs> hey guys, I'm going to try to keep this short and straight to the point. My father had an affair with another woman and left our home to live with her. My dad had a vasectomy after I was born. Before getting divorced and only being separated with my mother for about eight months, my father had a vasectomy reversal and got his GF pregnant. Now they are married. My mom rightfully feels bitter and resentment towards my dad. My dad wants me to have a relationship with him and his new wife and family and is sad about me not wanting to. Is it okay for me not to want to? And what should I try or what should I do? I think hate and bitterness is the fuel that keeps things moving in this world. <laughs> Keep on. <laughs> you really believe that? Uh, no, but my father uh, cheated on my mother constantly and they uh, finally got divorced. And um, and I, rem I remember the gum-smacking whore that he left my mother for. Mm, um, wow. And, <laughs> mm, gum and it, it was difficult to get close to that woman. So I identify explicitly with what this person is saying. It's a long, hard road, baby. Uh, and then, you know, my father, through the years, he was with um, some, some different women um, of different qualities. And then later in life, you know, um, he, the, uh, the, the woman he married from the Philippines, I, I love her. She's great. Mm -hmm. And then there was, you know, couple people before then that were pretty great too so um it's all circumstantial mm -hmm. and um it sounds like there's some hard cold bitter shit in that email oh yeah i can relate you to and it. i just have we just deal with everything in the opposite ways i think what would you say no i'm just saying just in job just watching you talk yeah and being so clear about what you were saying? Why? Well, I I, I, no, I'm, I'm I experienced you, what that person. I understand though. I'm just saying I mean, there was no vasectomy. I'm, <laughs> yeah. like, I'm not fighting with you. I'm not fighting with you. But like I'm not fighting with you. Yeah. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you that you 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 just you know I'm just observing you over the last couple of years at the comedy clubs and whatever, and I've always thought this that you just deal with everything in a completely different way than I do. We internalize things different. We react differently. Um, our thought processes are different. It's incredible what God does, right? My thing is this: mm -hmm. cut him, cut him out. The dad? Yeah. Forever? No, it's for right now. For how long though? Just about how? It, for me, it's like look if, if that's how you feel. If that's how you feel, then feel it. If, yeah. Yeah. I mean, exactly. Yeah. 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 True. And if he's being an inconsiderate fuck right now and not being, you know, not he's not. I think these things are so delicate 
if he he, he he it sounds like he's being really indelicate about the situation mm. and every he's being proud of the fact that he has his new girlfriend is knocking her up and he he doesn't have any regard for the feelings of the family that he mm. left behind but he's not going to be an an asshole forever so maybe you can hate him right now feel all those feelings but if he morphs into a better man later on then you can have a relationship with him mm. But be open to that. But if you feel like shit right now, you're that's warranted. That's good. I, I it sounds like he kind of disrespected the mom. And yeah, it sounds like that there's it. hard feelings about that. Yeah. And like my father, you know, he disrespected my mom. But you know, like you said, um, he eventually became a better guy. Yeah. You know, through you know after he made many more mistakes. Yeah. You know, but mm. um, I think yeah, feel your feelings. You're, you're obviously you, your mom's still with us, right? Yes. She you, turned actually. My mother turned eighty today. Wow. Your dad passed? Uh, my father was killed by a drunk driver in 2009. <gasps> oh my gosh, shouldn't I ask that? We should have just got out. We should have just gotten out of the fucking... Yeah. Yeah. Really, that happened? Yeah. In 2009? Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Was he driving or was he just walking down the street? Uh, <clears throat> he had picked up uh, his Philippine wife from... Uh, she was a caregiver, picked her up from work and was driving her mm. home. And um, was on 55 Highway and some drunk driver doing like over 100 miles an hour, was weaving in and out of traffic, hit his minivan from behind, flipped three or four times, ended up in a ditch. She was badly hurt, but not as bad as my father. And uh, he was in the hospital for like three months. Then he got out and got uh, pneumonia and died. Wow. Yeah. Tom Rhodes, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, yeah. That's so, how we're going to end. <laughs> we, have to, we have to end like that, all right? Give Tom Rhodes Don't a round of applause. Don't ask any more questions. I'm not going to ask any more questions. Yeah, I have to end there. Don't end there, man. Don't end there. Don't end there. Don't knock, 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 kn
from Tiger the Tiger Belly Tiger. I like, like it, Gilbert. This, I like it. This whole episode, great <laughs> segue. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we should guys put your fan theories in uh, the YouTube comments. Uh, email us. Actually, I'm curious who can write fan fiction behind this. But I feel like a whole movie could be written about the sick act of taking a sleeve off. My favorite cam oil shirt. Do you know how precious this shirt is? I got it from Jamie at Raggedy Threads in Little Tokyo. And when I saw this shirt for the very first time and I I touched it and it's so worn in, I thought, God, this is my dream shirt. And I took like, I remember taking it home and I took so many pictures with it that day because I was like, this is my favorite shirt of all time. So I know someone knows that fact. So it has to be someone that knows this is my favorite shirt of all time. And it's got to be one of you fucks, so. I like this. Let's write some, yeah, fan fiction. It has to be minimum five paragraphs. <laughs> like, I want people to go Who's deep. Who's going to read through that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bryce, you want to read some fan fiction <laughs> about down, I'm down. sleeveless shirts? Uh, speaking of shirts, uh, horrible segue. <laughs> Today is the day, uh, so if you haven't copped them yet, you better hurry up and go to the website right now. Copped. At the, cop. Mm-hmm. Aquafina, shout out to Aquafina. <laughs> the tigerbelly.com website. Uh, we have our gray, me walking down the street. Uh, long sleeve shirts and they're also white and also Bryce uh, why don't you show them uh, the little pin right next to you oh yes oh I love these this pins this thing is great where's our camera here we go find your camera Bryce tell them about that pin Bryce and, uh, beautiful you know, pen t- talk beautiful. about the backing it's beautiful, it's beautiful. what is it of back. Uh, let's metal, say the audio only audience George, what are they George oh, simmer down let the man speak George <laughs> <laughs> two metal class in the back here very it's high a glu- quality it's a glue bottle it's the favorite design everybody had that's on the uh, on the let the man speak that- George He's saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this is how Bryce does. George, he pull up the camera since you have things to say about this. <laughs> is it because Bryce would have been invited to the wedding and not you? <laughs> no, it's actually because he wasn't giving anything useful. It's a pin. It has backings. It has a clasp. Uh, you can pin it on things. Like, what is it? It's a favorite design that everybody loves. So, uh, yeah, these oh, two. what is it, George? I still haven't heard what it is. <laughs> I de- said it when you were like, okay. It's a great You were angry, pin. so you stopped paying Gosh, attention. These two guys <laughs> run a company together. <laughs> It's only Shout gotten out worse. To Seven it's beautiful. Bye now. Shout out to Seven Eckies Production. These are the CEOs at the top. Oh, jeez, Gilbert. All right. <laughs> but guys, get it's this great. pin. It's really dope. I put it in my little gym bag. I put it on my overalls. I put them everywhere. Yeah, and David So is rocking it on his bag as well. Shout out to George for passing along. Um, what else? Oh, also, um, Bobby will be in um, Cincinnati, Ohio, <laughs> as well as Tempe, Arizona. Those are his next um, road dates. Please go to bobbyleelive.com um, for more information on that. And, you know, come out and support Papa. So be happy to see you. And to get all the information, remember bobbyleelive.com. And follow him on Instagram at bobbyleelive. Kalila, where can we follow you? At Calamity K. Ooh. And uh, Bryce, where can we follow you? Bryce Alec. George, where can we look Underscore at? Underscore Kimmel on Instagram. Oh, okay. You can also follow us on Instagram at Tigerbelly, at Twitter at the Tiger Belly. And email us any questions at thetigerbelly at gmail.com. Everyone, have a good night.